What's up? Parallel imaging coming up. Welcome back, guys. If you're new to this channel, I'm back again. I'm an MRI radiographer, and in my channel, I'm covering things from basic to advanced MRI topics, tutorials, just like this one. So if you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. I got a few requests when it came to the parallel imaging. People asking, "Hey, back, can you make a video regarding this topic?" And I was thinking, "Yeah, I should." And when I dive into this topic, it's like I knew it before. This topic is so huge, so I'm gonna try to make it short, simple, and uh, try to you know draw out the benefit out of it and the pro and the cons. Before we dive into the live scanning, I'm gonna take the practical part here today. You can read more about this, the theory part at. MRI questions and answer so you will get a better understanding of this remember there are many different approaches when it comes to parallel imaging so different vendors have different names but it all has the same goal right parallel imaging came around in the early 90s and I wasn't around MR when it came around so I didn't have the first hands-on experience but my colleague which has been working with MR for a long time he said back then this was a game changer new Techniques were available, uh, could scan faster, new coils became available, and so on and so on. When it comes to CMS vendors, CMS um, provide different parallel imaging approaches, but the most use is uh, Grappa and then you have Kuiperinia. I'm not going to talk about Kuiperinia today, I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible by using the Grappa approach. So if you're ready, let's go to the scanner and do some live scanning. Alright guys, we are live at 1.5 Tesla, but this parallel imaging works the same on every field strength, the theory behind this. And uh, I'm just going to do a knee imaging here to demonstrate you parallel imaging. So I'm just going to do a localizer here, so we get a decent uh, sagittal of the knee. What I'm choosing here is a T2 sagittal, and I'm just going to do a few slices in the mid part, just to save scan time for this demonstration. The first sequence I'm going to do here now is having the prowl imaging off. And you can see my relative SNR is at 1.0 there. But remember, whenever you're saving your protocol or scan, that means that whenever you open it again, it will say it's 1.0. So it's just a relative indicator. Remember that, and it's a very helpful tool to know which parameter affects the SNR to gain or to lose the SNR. Currently, we have 3 minutes and 19 seconds for this one. So we're just going to do a scan there. And my second scan is to have the parallel imaging on PAT2. So what does PAT2 mean? The thing is that in Siemens we're using Grappa. That's uh, one of the recommended parallel imaging techniques for Siemens vendor. So the acceleration factor here now is PAT2. So let's do it simple. You have a case space. So let's say you have a matrix of 256. That means that 256 face encodings directions. Whenever you're not using parallel imaging, you're sampling the whole case space, right? It takes time, but you also got good SNR. So whenever you're having parallel imaging PAT2, that means that you're jumping over every second line. So you undersample your case space to save scan time, to speed this up. But remember, whenever you are undersampling or doing this technique, you're losing SNR. So I'm having a PAT2 on now and look at the relative SNR. It says now 0.71. But look at the scan time. It says now 1 minute and 42. So I saved a lot of scan time there by doing so. But pitfall, losing signal. So let's scan that one. And now let's go for PAT3. So look at the signal now, it went from 0 0.71 to 0 0.58. So I lose a more signal, but then I also save scan time because you're really speeding this up. So now I'm jumping every third line in case space, the phase encoding. So let's go for part four. Okay, now look at the relative SNR is now at 0 0.50. So I started out with 1.0 and now I have PAT4. That means that I lose half of the signal 
and then the scan time is now around one minute. So I lost a lot of SNR, but let's see if my parameter settings can handle this path four. So we scan that one. I'm just gonna do a copy of these four just to check the scan time here. So we went from three minutes and 19 without path, and then we have path two, one minute and 42, and then we have path three, one minute and 17, and path four, one minute. So we save a lot of scan time here by using the parallel imaging approach. But how far can we go with this parallel imaging? Because you know, we lose a lot as an R. Let's check this out. So this is the four images head to head comparison. The first one there is pat off, second, pat two, third, pat three, and the fourth, pat four. So let's take a look at the images here. By my first look, it seems that path off and path two and path three, it seems okay. Path four, you see a lot of noise there in your image. Look at the muscle there, a lot of noise. Let's zoom these images in a little bit. Okay, I learned from a good friend of mine, always look in the corners and uh, the eyes does not always catch everything. But as you can see in the muscle there, path two, there's a little bit noise there, but it's diagnostic. And you save a lot of scan time, right? Path 3 is, seems okay also. But I think going from path 2 to path 3, you don't save that much scan time. Maybe path 2 is good enough here. Path 4 is a no-go. It's too much noise. But then again, let's do some measurements. Okay, what I did here now is that I put a region of interest in the air just to check the noise level. So the mean there is 14, and you can see there next, path 2 is 15.7. That's not much lost in noise, right? And then you have path 3, almost 21 in the mean. And then you have path 4, 40, almost 44, which also can be seen on images. Even though this test was for the knee and for the knee coil, but remember that uh, parallel imaging works differently from you know, scanner to scanner and coils to coils and how you're setting up your parameter. But the main point of parallel imaging is that you understand your case base and to speed this up, check your image quality and how far can you really push with your parallel imaging. So this is something you can do for comparison to see where your levels are at when it comes to the SNR. Use parallel imaging wisely. It's a much needed parameter. That's it guys. I hope you find this video valuable and yeah, gave you a little bit a better understanding when it came to parallel imaging. So parallel imaging is not a scary thing, it's not dangerous. Just use it properly and you get a great benefit out of it. So I do have a question for you before we close up today. Are there any sequences where you're not using parallel imaging? If so, let me know in the comment down below. If you like this video, do not forget to push the like button and subscribe. Hit on the notification bell because then we get a ding ding whenever new things are coming up from me. And by hitting the subscribe button, it will show support to my channel. Until we catch up again, I see you around.